Well, the length of the pole, do we are we looking like a 10 feet, 11 foot pole? Uh, 10 or 12. 10 or 12. 10 to 12 in yeah. that range, you guys. Yeah, so when you're when you're going sturgeon fishing, you want a you want a good sturdy pole that'll go 10 to 12 feet. How about a tip? Does it need to be sensitive to the bite? It don't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. As far as casting, does casting matter as far as distance goes? That for sturgeon it doesn't matter. Okay. You throw, you don't really throw far. Okay. Now, one thing that you pointed out to me is that when you've got your when you've got your rod assembly going here, I'm going to get pan in for a close up here of this one. Oh, this one's broken. Sturgeon fishing. Okay. Broken. So here's a broken pole from sturgeon fishing. What caused it? Too big of a sturgeon. Too big of a sturgeon. Okay. Yeah. What would you say here as we look at this setup here? What would you say is the best pole sitting here as far as sturgeon? We've got uh, best four pole. good poles and a broken one sitting here. So. If you had to pick a pole that you're going to throw out right now and you're going to get a sturgeon, which one would you pick and the, why? Uh, the ugly stick? No, pretty much this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so we got a close up here of the ugly stick. It's a Shakespeare. Here's your ugly stick. And that one's a, a, a Kuma surf rod. Okay, we got a Kuma surf rod here. I happen to have one of those and I like it. I, I believe I got mine on a surf rod last year when I was with Rom. Okay. Now, how important is the eye on the tip as far as distance? It's something that you've mentioned before when we've been catfishing. Oh. The, big, the bigger the eye, the yeah. bigger the distance? Yeah, the bigger the eye, the better you could cast with it. Okay, and we're talking about the eye near the tip here, right? Yep. All the eyes. Okay. So that's important. Okay, now as far as line, what kind of line do you recommend? Uh. 80 to 100 pound pow pro. Okay, 80 to 100 pound test line, braided line, power pro is the one that Peter prefers. Or spider wire. Any kind of spire wire will do. But it's, it should be braided because why, why do we need braided line for sturgeon? Strength? So you can just full power on sturgeon. Okay. <laughs> so if you use monofilament line, there, there's more of a risk of stretching with the line and also sensitivity to the bind. Uh, there's no stretch with braided line whatsoever, so you're going to feel that bite a lot more of the sensitivity. Okay, uh, pull out one of those weights that we've been talking about on the internet with the BOC folks. And let's pan into that. This one's a 10 and this one's a 12. Okay, we got a 10 and a 12 right here. That's all we use. And I'm holding, I'm going to let you hold them here. Let's get out of the sunlight here a little bit. Whoa! My first shot at video. And this good view right here. Hold them up right, right where you got it. Is that this, one the twelve this right is the there? 12, yeah. And you see the double. Hold by the Yeah. Let me get a good. There you go. Oh, the tip quite. No, they want to see the top. Right? Okay. Now, when you're hooking up this kind of a weight, you're saying that you want it to hook yeah. through here, right? Hook right here. Because if you hook it on the bottom, it's going to drag, yeah, and you want to be able to not get snagged yeah, when and have free reign to pull it out. So. All this talk that we've been posting on the BOC about why it's important to have the uh, the ring on the top of the weight, you want it on the tip. Yeah. You want it on the very tip. The reason why is this bar here, when you have a bite, when you swing it, it's going to cause pressure. When you, you know when the, water, when the water's too much current, when you swing it, it's going to... You know what I'm talking about, It's right? more pressure against the fish and yeah. harder to set the hook. Yeah, and then when, okay. when, whenever there's a lot of tree or branches, when you roll okay. it in, this side, it gets stuck. You okay. know, this side is just... Okay, it's like so it's very important when you guys are hooking up the weights here that the point is where you want it to hook. Yeah. Because it's easier to pull up. You want to go directly for the point. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause it and we're going to switch over here to hooks in just one second. Just hold on. Okay, we're back now. We're going to talk a little bit about the sturgeon hook. Sturgeon have very tough mouths. Um, they have like a suction cup for a mouth. And getting a hook set is very critical. Here's a good look at a surgeon hook right here, right up close. That's a 7 0. It's a 7 aught, correct? Yeah. 7 aught hook right here. This one's a 8 aught. And this is an 8 eight aught? Yeah. 8 aught hook, so 7 8. I'm holding the 7. Peter's got the 8 aught hook. As far as brand make, um, I am not quite sure on that. It's a, it's a owner, I think. We're going to try to get you the brand name here and hold it. Here we go. 
octopus. Let me get a good view of that. Uh, the octopus hook. I cannot. Here we go. Let me see if I can get a good view of that. Octopus hook. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to get a good view of it from here. I don't know if you guys can see that. But, uh, Hirakatsu? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, that was an 8 eight aught package there, and that's what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Peter. Now, the, the swivel, you've got some nice swivels there, and you'll notice that for sturgeon, they need to be bigger. They need to be bigger. I don't know if you guys can get a good view of that. I'm kind of panning in close here. There it is. Pretty sizable swivel. Now getting back to the weights, you should never ever go below 8 ounces in the Sacramento River because you're going to be all over the river and crossing people's line. So we're recommending, depending on the water conditions, the current, the wind conditions, anywhere from 10 to 14 ounces yeah. in that range. 10 to 14. 10 to 14, 10 to 14 on those pyramid weight, weights that we pulled out there. <coughs> um, as far as, Peter, what's your preference as far as leader? Now we talked about using the Power Pro, and we talked about using the braided line, uh, spider wire, these are all braided uh, brands, they all work good, 80 to 100 pound test. What, what is your actual preference as far as the leader, where the hook is going to go? With these? Yeah. I re no, I prefer these right here. Okay. 80 pound. And he uses an 80 pound, that's a 50 yard spool there. No, here it is. 80 pound clear. Uh, it's an, an It's an Andy. Monofilament. Andy monofilament. And he prefers to use that. Uh, we talked about maybe an 18 inch leader, two foot long leader. Uh, at least. Okay. We this long. Probably at least a yard. Yeah, at least a yard. At least a yard. Least a yard. Least a yard. So yeah. probably about anywhere from 36 to 48 inches. Yeah. Three foot leader, yeah. Three to four foot, and now we got a lot of popular demand for these pole stands here, and I don't know if you guys would make them for a price or not. There's a couple. Here. Okay. I'm still making more though. Okay. Uh, if you guys want to try to get a deal going with Peter to where you you pay him to make the poles, I'm pretty sure he'd be glad to do it. He just needs to be financed to do it. But these are very excellent. Sturgeon pole stands, you can use them for striper fishing, for catfish. Yep. Catfish, striper, sturgeon, it's all good. Yep. And in just a second, we're going to get to the Shimano reel. We'll right back. You want to see clear? Okay, here we go to the Shimano reel. That one's a 4500. This one's a 4500B. You can probably get them on the internet for under $100 if you really go to eBay and, and bargain hunt. Uh, but that is the Shimano. 4500, you should, you should not, I would not recommend the 3500 series. I would go 4500. Or 6500. Uh, 6500 is my actual preference. It's a bigger reel, more capacity. This one's a... This is a Daiwa. MCAS Plus. It's a 5000. Okay, you got a 5000 uh, Daiwa reel here. It's an infinite anti-reverse 5000 model. That would be probably the best alternative you have to the bait runner. It's about a hundred bucks, and it's about a hundred dollar reel. And uh, it's about the only reel we've ran across that we would recommend. Uh, the bait runners that I that I have, I have a couple. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rob's got one, and and uh, Sean's about to get one. Those are okay too for sturgeon. I was able to run ac across a good closing sale at uh, at Kmart and those are pretty decent reels also. This one's about 500 bucks. This reel. is a $500 reel and this one here is a... It is, it's a Daiwa Saltiga Surf 5000. It's a Tiga 5, Surf. 5500. It's a 5500 reel but it's it's a, it's a pricey reel. It's $500. Yes. Lifetime so, warranty. You can really go well with a bait runner from anywhere from 100 to 100, 100 and I would say the 100 to the 125 Bait, uh, range in, yeah. in for you know yeah. 4500 or 6500 yeah. reel and uh, that should just about what, do it what kind of poles do you want do you want a cheap pole like this one's about like maybe 30 bucks only right you can get a 30 dollar pole uh so. peter saying <clears throat> it's a fishing barefoot uh magograph titanium caught a rod caught a 75 inch sturgeon on this. a 75 inch sturgeon came in on that pole and you paid what for that pole again 30 bucks only. 30 dollar pole so 30, 30 40 dollars so, you know, blog with us, and I want to thank Peter for his time. 